Here we are then, the Fantex Shift 2. I've been a silly billy. Check out the RGB RAM. It's just not gonna work with most new builds. How crazy is that? It's my favorite time of year. No, not the holiday season. It's ITX gaming PC building, hooray. Inside this box, we have the brand new Fantex Evolve Shift 2. And this is the sort of ITX case that I personally might well use because you've probably been following along and know that I've been using the NZXT H1 for quite a while now. And obviously it is fantastic marketing for the Shift 2 when your closest competitor has a recall involving just two screws. Sounds suspicious, doesn't it? But obviously that would be fairly easy to fix. So the question is, is the Shift 2 gonna be any good and am I gonna start using it in my personal setup? Always at the cutting edge of PC gaming, Asus Predator range is now better than ever. Not only will you find the very best of gaming laptops, desktops, and of course monitors, but they're now available in a very special bundle. Monitors, desktops, and selected laptops come with an extended three-year warranty for complete peace of mind, while gaming desktops and selected laptops also drop in a free subscription to Microsoft Game Pass for PC. Get rewarded today and learn a little bit more with that link down below. Speaking of personal setups, if you haven't actually seen my most recent setup video, then you all have noticed I have these fancy lights on the wall, and you can find out how the installation went and everything you need to know in the video linked in the top right corner of your screen. And obviously, it is a little bit of a funny old shape, this, but it's becoming more and more common. I mean, if you look at the Xbox Series X, for instance, it's essentially just a smaller version of this. So, here we are then, the Fantex Shift 2. And i tell you what, it's not only a very nice looking design, I mean it's very eye catching, but the thing that definitely catches my eye the most is all of this airflow that you get. You've got mesh on both side panels, so if you are going to run, you know, what, RTX 3080s or anything really that has a very high TDP, then you should actually be able to displace all of that heat. You do still have quite a solid panel on the front, which doesn't really matter based on the configuration that we've got here, but there is still a little bit of ventilation down the sides and this should block out a little bit of noise. On the back though, it is a different story as while we still have aluminium for that structure, you can see there are plenty of cutouts here. I'm excited now, I'm excited. To get inside, you just press on the top and then this little flap opens up and then if you look inside you can see there are these little thumb screws that you take off and then each panel should detach. The screws seem to be captive so not capacitive like I made the mistake of saying a few weeks ago so they actually do stick to the side panel so you're not going to lose them. Same with the other side. See, plenty of mesh, you can still see me. That's a good sign of a good case. I mean, you could just stick a sticker of me on the side of it if you want and you get the same effect. Interestingly, actually, all of the USB ports are right down here at the bottom. The front and rear panels remove in exactly the same way, just a couple of thumb screws that you can take out. Make sure this is down to remove the back panel. And there you go, exploded view. Sounds so dangerous, doesn't it? Exploded view, but I mean, is actually more like a naked case, I prefer that. So you can see there are plenty of different options. You've got like SSD bays here and down here actually, so you can move them about depending on where you want to put everything really. Your PCIe riser cable is up here and it supports very long graphics cards. We'll see what we can fit in just a moment, but this is gonna slot in there. Then obviously the build area for your motherboard is here at the top. So actually this is looking pretty good. The only real main difference, I guess, between this and the H1 is the fact that the H1 comes with a power supply and a water cooler, whereas this you're gonna have to add your own stuff, which isn't necessarily an issue, but I mean, it's gonna be easier to build in the H1 just because everything's sort of ready to go, I guess, whereas you've got to think a little bit more with this one, but you know, it's hardly for advanced builders. I'll tell you what, actually, pet peeve of mine is when YouTubers say, you know, it's like, I don't know. I'm watching your video. What are you trying to tell me? I know you're just stalling for time. Don't say you know. This case, you know, no, I don't, no. You do, of course, get a little accessories box and Fantex always neatly organize the screws for you, which is fantastic. Thank you, Fantex, you have my praise. We do, of course, actually need to build this PC, which means taking my current ITX PC apart. You can see, actually, in terms of the size difference between what is probably the most popular ITX case this year, this one from Cooler Master, what is it, the NR200P. In terms of design, obviously, they are completely different. It would have been quite cool, actually, if Cooler Master had almost given you feet, so you could have had this in this orientation, but the way the cables on the back work means that's just not a thing at the moment. Let me know your thoughts down in that comment section below. Would you go for the NR200P, something a bit more traditional, or are you team, I don't know, H1 or Shift 2 that goes for this more 
vertical design. I mean, my main issue actually with the 200P is that unless you use very specific components, it's very difficult to get a pretty looking build with this case because unless you're doing like some sort of custom loop, it's just cable management gets in your way and you can't really use very big coolers in this. Something that is definitely a very big factor though and that you really do need to be aware of is that this case supports a 240 millimeter radiator whereas this will cap out at 140. Something both of these cases do have in common though is that they both require an SFX power supply. So if you've got a full size one knocking around, you won't be able to use that in this build because they're just too big. The largest power supply I think you can get in SFX form factor at the moment is 850 watts and that is a Cooler Master one. Most of them cap out at 750, which shouldn't matter for most builds, but if you are going for like a 6900 XT or you want to put a 3090 in here, then this might cause some serious problems. Deconstruction complete, let's actually start our build in the Fantex. And in terms of storage, you've got a few options, obviously two and a half inch drives, NVMe are probably gonna be the most modern ones. But if you do have an old, well, music collection or something on a three and a half inch, it turns out that you can actually put it here, which is quite surprising for an ITX chassis. I've just inserted my NVMe SSD straight into the motherboard, but if you're going to use two and a half inch drives, just a couple of screws to secure it into this little caddy, then you can grab it and just slot it completely toolessly into place. Fantex recommend that you actually install the cooling at this stage and it's a little bit interesting that it supports 140 millimeter fans at the back on the bottom and the pre-installed one as well at the top but if you want to use radiators you are limited to a 120 only right here at the back. It is going to limit you a little bit if you do want to do some really fancy loops or anything because if you only have one radiator and it's a 120 that's not really going to cut it. As I'm doing an air-cooled system though, I'm going to install two Silent Wings 3 into this as I'm going to go for silence. It's not like you're going to see it anyway. If you do go for the non-air version, then you have tempered glass and this is when you could spice it up with those RGB fans, but it's not really what this thing is for. Grab your motherboard and drop it into place, which should be fairly simple. Just make sure that the motherboard is actually facing upwards as you're going to route all of your cables through the top of this which is a little bit more faff than a normal system, but I mean, not really. Now comes the really interesting bit because I've deliberately not put a cooler on here because I want to see just what you can fit because I think this is very much geared towards using a 120 millimeter radiator. But what if you don't have that? Maybe you have like the 3700X stock cooler, for instance. Will that fit in? And the answer, to be honest with you, is no. You can see that that's just not going to work whatsoever. It does look to me though as if you can actually use the smaller Ryzen cooler. So if you've got like a Ryzen 5 and it comes with one of these, it's the Stealth, I think this one, and it screws down, it's just got enough clearance. I mean, it won't be silent, but obviously for a gaming PC, it's more the GPU that's gonna make the noise anyway, so it's not the end of the world. I think this is probably gonna be a good option for most people really, because you think this will save you what? about 70, 80 quid on a water cooler. It looks pretty good as well. It's just gonna make a little bit more noise. Let's hope all of these connections actually fit. I would wager that they do. So we we'll start with the old USB. It's not the absolute fiddliest case I've ever built in before, but it's ITX and room is definitely cramped. Progress, progress, it's getting a, a little bit messy, but when doesn't ITX? Next up is actually the graphics card. So we're gonna use the old 3070, I think, for this build. But the first thing you need to do is actually insert it into this little riser and you do it outside of the case. Now you really have some sort of alien device here. Getting it back in isn't quite so easy as it's not necessarily that obvious because there's quite a lot of slack that you have to push down and it doesn't look like this is gonna fit, but rest assured it does. So you're just getting that GPU in place and you want to line it up with this top bar. Once you have got it installed though, which doesn't actually take that long, you can see you can move it any which way you like really, as long as it's up or down I suppose. So if you need additional clearance for cables or anything, or maybe you've got an extra tall GPU, it should actually fit in here. Uh, I've been a silly Billy. I think that the fan... <laughs> oh God. I think that the fan is meant to go underneath here because the power supply doesn't fit. And I'm thinking, that's terribly designed. And then I thought, no, actually, Marcus, it's, it's you that's terribly designed. Use your brain. They even give you some cable management down here because they've thought about it. I think that's also a very clear example of why you can't put a radiator at the bottom because 
it's sort of embedded within the case itself. Second time lucky then, and now we can actually insert our power supply, which makes a whole lot more sense because it goes in this side and it just screws in down here at the bottom. It's amazing when you realize just how much of an idiot you've been because the whole case starts to make a whole lot more sense. You know, it's like, I don't know. I'm watching your video. What are you trying to tell me? I know you're just stalling for time. Don't say you know. Awesome. That is actually all of our components inside. And looking at it, to me, I think this is going to be fairly easy to cable manage, actually, which again, isn't always the case with ITX. You've just got to be super careful not to have anything trapped in any of those fans because that will cause you big problems and horrible noises. Oh no, no, I've got a cable jammed. Oh. Dear. To be fair, Fantex have clearly thought about this though, because you've got cable management at the back as well. So those big cables that sort of have to go here will go here. And then the rest of the stuff actually go around the back and then feed back in through to the chamber where there aren't any fans. So, all right, fair enough. The easiest way to tidy these cables up, I would say, is just to use some form of strap. You sadly don't get one of these with the case, which is a little bit annoying, but you know. It's like, I don't know. I'm watching your video. What are you trying to tell me? I know you're just stalling for time. Don't say you know. And you just end up with something that is actually pretty good looking and very easy to build in. There isn't actually any evidence of any like fan issues like I suspected there might be. And you can see as long as you've got a CPU cooler that is built within the limitations of this case, I think you're gonna be very happy indeed. Of course, the journey is not yet over. We do need to see whether it works and what temperatures and things are like. I have good feeling. I have good feeling. I have a good feeling about the thermals on this because it is of course so open and that's probably why you'd wanna go for this in the first place. Let's test this out and obviously see it once it's put back together again, but there is no chance that I'm gonna do that until I know it works. Because I don't want to waste my time. That sounded very aggressive, sorry. I'm a very nice chap in real life, I promise. I'm not a tech chap though, Ugh. You can see the problem with having all of the display outputs at the top though, it means that you're gonna need an extra long display port because suddenly all of this is needed extra cord. But ignore all of the mess, let's actually see if this thing works. Power button is this big one here. That's definitely not good. Will we work? Will we work? We're definitely plugged in. I mean, the case is working because, uh, well, it turned on. I just wonder if it's the PCIe riser cable, if I haven't put that in properly or something. Uh, so I've worked out what the problem is and I have fixed it, but you're not gonna like it because the problem is, with these latest generation graphics cards, so the brand new ones from AMD and Nvidia, so the 300 series and of course the 16900 series, they all use PCI generation four. And what the problem is, is that this little riser cable there is gen three. So what will happen when you turn on your PC for the first time is that your motherboard will see that you've got a gen four graphics card, will enable gen four capability, but it doesn't actually work through the PCI riser cable. So the solution is to actually swap this out for a Gen 4 one, but I'm not really sure that there are any at the moment. But this is very much the perfect storm because how many people are gonna have the advanced knowledge to know that this riser cable is gonna cause that much of a problem? I mean, I forgot about it building this. And you actually have to build up your PC on the motherboard itself, so no case. Then you'll actually be able to get into the BIOS and then you can go miscellaneous, PCIe slot configuration, and then you set it from automatic to Gen 3, because if it is set to auto or Gen 4, it's not going to work. This is so frustrating, and it's a big issue for Fantex and all of the manufacturers that are selling cases like this that require a riser cable, because it's just not gonna work with most new builds. How crazy is that? Let's put the side panels back on though and see what this actually looks like in its fully completed and hopefully fully working form. That is our completed build and you can actually see pretty much all of the hardware through the mesh. And because I've done a very nice, neat and tidy job, it means when we turn it on, I think we're actually uh, be treated to quite a good looking system. It makes more sense. The H1 has that glass on the front that you can sort of see through, but there's nothing to see. It's, it, it's not really the best design in the world. Check out the RGB RAM. 
I mean, actually, there's quite a lot of potential here to make it look really cool. I like the intrigue as you can sort of see inside a little bit, but not completely. Let's test the thermals, though. Here we are then in control with some ray tracing action. And this will give you a good idea, actually, of what a 3700X and an RTX 3070 can do. But we're more looking at, of course, those thermals. Control is an example of a game that isn't particularly CPU bound, so you shouldn't have too many problems to be honest with you when it comes to CPU temperatures, even on a stock AMD cooler like this one. So that's what, around about 62 degrees, bearing in mind I've tuned this for noise as well, so really not too bad at all. But obviously, if you're playing something more intensive like Battlefield, for instance, then that will of course shoot all the way up. But interestingly, in terms of those GPU thermals, it is slightly more than you'd get in a typical ATX case. I never saw this go above 71, 72 degrees in my other test system. Seems to be pretty stable actually, around about 74 max of 75 degrees, which is well in the range of this GPU. Our clock speed is around about 1890, so I've seen higher. I guess if you had maybe slightly better thermals, you could get this to boost to around about 1950, but really, you know, not a concern whatsoever. And fundamentally, we have mesh on both sides of the chassis. And if you think how these new Ampere cards work, where they actually have that open airflow design, so one of the fans is almost acting like a pass-through, it blows air through a heat sink and then out. Even in that Cooler Master case, it was sort of blowing into nowhere. Whereas with this case, because we actually have plenty of air at the bottom, it can actually shoot the air through and out the other side. Just do yourself a favor and do kit this out with as many fans as possible because it clearly does work. More airflow is always better. And while it might be tempting to go for the glass version of this, I just don't really see the appeal. It might look a little bit better, but surely when you're gaming, you want to be looking at your TV. You don't want to be distracted by the lights anyway. And you're going to be distracted by the extra noise that all of those fans will have to make to sort of overcome the thermal issues that may or may not be present depending on the stuff they actually put in here. With our peak temperature there of around about 76 degrees, this definitely gets my seal of approval. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Would you go for the Shift 2 Air? Would you rather have the glass version or would you go for something completely different, maybe more traditional, maybe that Cooler Master? I would absolutely love to hear from you, so let me know down in that comment section below. If you do want to check out the Amazon affiliate links for this and learn a little bit more information on pricing, then you can link down below. And of course, of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out Acer's epic Predator gaming gear. There's some hot new drops with extended 3 year warranties on a huge range of products and even up to a free year, yes year, of Xbox Game Pass for PC when buying a Predator Triton 500. Level up your PC gaming journey today and learn a little bit more with that link down below. A massive thank you though, smash that like button, get subscribed and I'll see you in the next one.